Hi guys, well it's a lovely evening today and um, I've been um, chopping my comfrey a little bit earlier. Uh, I've been using these little babies. I couldn't find my big, my big um, shears. They're in the shed buried under a load of compost but these are just as good. These are apps. These, I bet these are 50 year old. I'm not kidding you, they must be 50 year old. Just looking at that nut there I know they're at least 50 year old. And um, they're as good today as they was when they was first first made. And um, they're perfect for chopping up my comfrey. Now, I was asked a question um, last episode. Um, what comfrey do you use, Matt? Well, I use two types and it's very difficult to pronounce them. So what I'm going to do is show you on the screen, screen, on the screen right now. These are the two varieties I use. Okay. Now, there's a slight difference in the two varieties. One, the common variety, which I've got here, is got a wider leaf, okay? It's a wider leaf. And the, the second variety has got a thinner leaf. And um, so, this is the name of the first variety. And this is the name of the second variety, okay? And you can, you can get these in edge rolls. You can get them... Um, everybody's got them normally on the allotments, unfortunately. Um, I've chopped mine to death and um, a friend of mine lets me uh, take all his comfrey, he doesn't use it and he says help yourself Matt, it's there uh, growing in that wild bit down there, you just go and get it, so that's what I do. And uh, in fact let me show you the two varieties now. This is the common um, comfrey that I use uh, quite a lot of and uh, as you can see it's got wider leaves and uh, it's called, I can't pronounce it, but this is what it's called. And if you look over here, this is the other kind. Oh, there's a frog down there, just bouncing about. Anyway, this is the other kind. As you can see, it's already flowering. And the, the leaves are, are a lot thinner. So, and uh, this variety is called... So there you go, so you've got the two varieties. That's the varieties I actually use of uh, comfrey and um, pretty awesome they are too so that's that's where we get that's it, it it's in its natural state growing away and um, you see some there the purple variety that's the thinner leaves the, the purple flowers i mean they've, they've all got purple flowers but um slightly different in the leaves and you can use the both of them together or separate it doesn't matter um it, it, it breaks down and it's absolutely fantastic. So let me show you chopping some of this stuff up with these little puppies. Okay guys, this is the common um, form of uh, comfrey. I can't pronounce the name, so what I'm going to do is just put it up here. So anyway, what we do, got a load of comfrey. In the bucket. And we've got this little pair of uh, scissors and basically what we do, we chop it up into tiny bits, yeah this is a cool little piece, a uh, cool little kit, 50p on the car boot, I pay for them, absolutely wonderful, miniature um, Secretary of Shears doing little bushes I suppose it, they look very old as well so as you can see chopping it very fine it drops down a lot quicker if you do it this way I would have got my bigger, bigger shears, but I can't get to them. I've got a ton of compost uh, buried on top of them, unfortunately. So, we've got a bit to go here, guys. That's what I'm going to do for the next 
20 minutes or so. Chop this up into tiny bits. Right, so we'll be back in a bit guys, this is going to take a lot of chopping because we've got quite a bit of it there as you can see, so anyway, I'll come back, so there we go, that's a lot, just chop this up, and what we'll do, we'll add it to, um, this is my comfrey bin, or I should say my comfrey pot, it'll just rot down, I will still be able to, to draw from the uh, comfrey bucket, even though uh, we're just putting this on top of the other. Pick all these bits up which we've scattered all over the bloody floor. So now we've got to get fit all this into the um, into the comfrey bin. But them are absolutely wicked. You would have thought you could get a miniature pair of them. Brilliant. Well, now I've got to remove um, some planters. Let's put the camera in the general direction. Down there, just where the greenhouse is, is the um, the comfrey bin. So we've got to take the plants off the top of it and the lid and then we're going to drop this in and mix it into the uh, into the, the tub. So let's crack on. Okay, so we've chopped it all up and um, well let me, might as well show you me putting it into the comfrey, um, into the comfrey, the stew, the stew pot as I like to call it. And I can tell you, if you had smelly vision, you'd all be your stomachs would be rolling. It's absolutely horrible. I got it all over my hands, all over my shoes. But at the end of the day, it's well worth it because uh, everything grows twice as fast when you give it a drink of water. Of that, so let me show you me putting it into the um, putting the the chopped up comfrey into this bin. And as you can see. Uh, Looks pretty rancid, and I can tell you just by stirring it, it is very rancid. So what I've got to do now? Oh, jeez! <coughs> well, in it goes, guys. And what we've got to try to do? Let's get it all in. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez, I wish you had smelly vision. Ooh. Right, hang on. I think we'd be better off if we do a little at a little at a time. Oh dear, don't get it in your mouth, Mark. Bloody hell. Oh, sod the worms what are inside there. It was full of worms at the top of that. Right, let's get some more in. You'd be surprised just how much comfrey you can get into this. Bloody some of bloody dandelion. Ooh, could have dandelion see.
we will get it all in eventually like I say it will rot down in no time Well, that's a lot of it. That'll take about... Well, with what's in there, it won't take no time in rotting down, but... You know... At the end of the day, uh, what's in there will help it rot down a lot quicker. I get me watering can now and I take some of the uh, Oh dear, there goes one of my plant pots, that's not good. Oh, it's okay, it was, uh, there was nothing coming up in it, so we got we, we dodged the bullet there. All right, so I will get a watering can, and empty some into a watering can, I can put it on some of my um, veg. This is, uh, I say, a very smelly affair, I can tell you. Uh, pity you ain't got smelly vision guys but we do put the two types in into this um, into this water tank and that's what it is so we it, it, like I say the bins full to the top we couldn't put the second variety we, we could have chopped it up and put it in but uh, there's just no room so uh, I'm not going to be greedy and um, in, a, in about three months or so, I'll be do putting out another bucket, um, a 30 litre bucket of that comfrey into, into the bin. Now, again, I'm asked how do I prepare it. What I do is, if, you, if you've not got water already into, into, the, into whatever you're putting it in, now, my point in case is that that's um, a, a header tank. Um, out of these, if you go into an old house, you know, they're pulling an old house down, ask the guys who are pulling it down, can you have the old header tank? Or someone's having um, central eating done, they normally take the uh, the header tank out, and they're ideal for, um, for, for stewing your comfrey. So uh, that's where I got mine from. And what I tend to what I do is, I get all the comfrey, chop it up, and I cram it in, ram it right in, okay? So it's completely um, filled to the top with comfort and then what I do then is fill it with water until the water is actually lapping at the top leave it for three four months give it a stir you find it breaks down after a couple of months and it it, it it turns into a liquid you know when it's ready because it stinks to high heaven it you, that, you know when that's that's the sign it's ready it's an un unmistakable smell uh, but I can say it's absolutely liquid gold and um, well, we just uh, we, we put too much in, so what I did is uh, I filled a couple of watering cans and uh, I watered my onions so much, so let me show you doing well, that. I'm just going to drain some of the liquid gold out of it. That way the lid will sit better on it. So I'm just going to do a bit of water in with this now and uh, then we can put the lid back on. Thank you. 
So that's me, me stir on and me um, centurion. Uh, just got a nice drink of comfrey tea there as well. So they'll thank me for it later on in the so year. So my onions, um, me stir on and me centurion have got a good soaking. And uh, while I was at it, we did them winter onions and we also did the um, the golden gourmet shallots, give them a drink. And it should pick them up no end. And, um, you know, there you go. So that's the comfrey um, that I use. I use two varieties. They're the two varieties again. Yeah, you pronounce it. Very difficult. <laughs> uh, especially when you've got a, a speech impediment. Um, there you go. You probably will never notice, but hey ho. So there we go, guys. Um, my comfrey is all ready, ready to go for. There's at least three months worth of comfrey there, and we'll use every last bit of that throughout the um, the growing season, and to a spectacular um, effect, hopefully. So thanks for watching. I think I'm going to spend another half hour in this sunshine, in this evening sunshine. It's absolutely wonderful. Oh. And I will be cleaning my tools. Always clean your tools, guys. I always emphasise that when I'm using my tools. Get them clean. Don't leave them getting dirty. Cleaner they are, longer they last. I might even run a, a sandstone over that and give them a little sharpen. Anyhow, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye for now.